Hey, this is Dennis. It's Thursday. I want to get back in the Word. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 3. We're going to start with verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed, held Peter and John. So I could just picture him. The lame guy had his arm around Peter and John. He was tickled to death. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon, greatly wondering. They were like, wow, this guy was healed. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Why, why are you marveling at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we have made this man to walk so jesus i mean peter is acknowledging here that that man wasn't healed by their power or their, their holiness but by the name of jesus christ of nazareth the god of abraham and of isaac and of of Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Jesus. Peter's saying, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob, has glorified his son Jesus Christ, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desire to murder to be granted unto you and kill the prince of life. You killed the prince of life, Jesus Christ, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And also point out, it doesn't say that Jesus raised Jesus from the dead. It says that God raised Jesus from the dead. And they're witnesses of Jesus being raised from the dead. In his name, through faith, in his name, have made this man strong. In the name of Jesus. Has made this man strong. Whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. He's standing there perfectly sound. He, he's not lame anymore. And now, brethren, I want that thou, through ignorance, you did it. He's saying, I'm thinking through ignorance you did this. You killed Jesus, as did also your rulers. But those things which God beforehand hath showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So he's pointing out, repent of your sins that, you, that they may be blotted out. He doesn't add in here baptism, but he says repent that your sins may be forgiven and blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. So after Jesus, he was lifted up and caught up in the heaven, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets, since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear the prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken 
have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Who was that seed? Jesus. Unto you, first God, having raised up his son. So he's saying this, this blessing first came unto you, the Jews. And then he points out that, again he says, God raised up his son, sent him to bless you. Father God sent Jesus to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. To me, iniquity is a sin. All righty, will God bless y'all? Walk with God one day at a time. Bye-bye.